What's going on YouTube? You already know who it is. Back at another video for you guys today. So, let's watch this video. Somebody um, sent me this. This is called The Real Typhoid Mary. The original asymptomatic on and one, two step um, super spread. So, this is from a channel called Weird History. If you want to check them out, go ahead and check them out. I'll leave the link in the description. So, let's read a little backstory to this real quick, shall we? Um, if you can skip it, you, if you want to skip ahead, go ahead, but I'm going to read this shit, so read along if you want. It says, the story of the real typhoid Mary in the early 1900s, germ theory was a relatively new concept and many, including doctors, okay, were unaware of how diseases spread. At the time, bacterial diseases like typhoid and uh, dysentery would still wipe, excuse me, could still wipe out an entire family. Damn. Uh, Mary Mallon was an Irish immigrant who worked as a cook for affluent New York families. Okay, in her wake, she unknowingly left an outburst of typhoid fever, earning her the um, epithet, earning her the epithet, typhoid Mary. By that time, doctors knew the disease was most commonly spread through, ex by that time, doctors knew the disease was most commonly spread through excrement and they were able to trace outbreaks by locating the start of a epidemic and following its spread now you might ask yourself what is typhoid typhoid what the fuck is that an infectious bacterial fever with an eruption of red spots on the chest and abdomen and severe intestinal irritation let's go ahead and check this out shall we in about a three two one in the early 1900s, germ theory was a relatively new area of study and doctors were only beginning to understand how bacterial diseases like typhoid were spread. At the same time, a poor Irish immigrant who worked as a cook for wealthy New York families was acting as a one-person super spreader, leaving a trail mm. of sickness and death in her wake, which would forever earn her the name Typhoid Mary. Today, we're going to take a look at the true story of the woman called Typhoid Mary. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what bizarre medical stories you would like to hear about. Okay, let's mask up and meet Typhoid Mary. Oh God. Yeah, who the hell is this woman? When Mary Mallon was first quarantined in 1907, doctors determined she had already infected 22 people and caused the death Damn. of a young girl. By the time she was permanently quarantined I know in they 1915, was mad at her. she had infected 51 people, at least three of whom had died. What no the asymptomatic hell? carriers of typhoid had ever been identified at that time. So Malin, who was always healthy, never believed she was the source of the outbreak. Nonetheless, public health officials repeatedly traced the frequent typhoid outbreaks right back to Mary. And despite a lifetime of resistance, Malin eventually wound up in permanent quarantine. Damn. The first vaccine for typhoid was created in 1896. While it was a great help to soldiers who were at high risk of contracting the illness, it never became widespread enough to be of much value to the general public. So in the early 1900s, the disease was still extremely dangerous and had a mortality rate of about 10%. The symptoms of typhoid are not pleasant. One to three weeks after infection, a person suffering from typhoid typically contracted a dangerously high fever. This was quickly followed by nausea, vomiting, muscle pain, and headaches. Oh my Following God, that, just a kill me now. rash would appear on the victim's chest. If no treatment was administered by this point, the next phase would usually be intestinal bleeding, leaving oh. the blood clots under the skin. In some oh. of the most dangerous cases, the abdomen would then be distended. Distended? Oh God. In 1906, a homeowner whose family had endured a particularly violent and seemingly inexplicable outbreak of typhoid hired a New York State Department of Health sanitary engineer named George Soper to figure out what happened. Soper knew the incubation period of the salmonella bacteria that causes typhoid was exactly three weeks. Starting his investigation by examining the servants, his suspicions quickly fell on an Irish immigrant who had been hired as a cook precisely three weeks before everyone got sick. That person was Mary Mallon. Born in 1868 in what is today Northern Ireland, Mary came to the United States in the year of either 1883 or 1884. She started off living with an aunt and uncle and found work as a cook for well-to-do families. 
Soper ran a background check on Malin and quickly saw that typhoid victims seemed to appear wherever she went. He also noticed she had a habit of changing jobs and names after each outbreak. Putting two and two together, Soper figured he had his woman. Soper questioned Mary uh -oh. and raised the possibility that she could be the carrier that was causing the typhoid outbreaks. Despite the evidence, Malin denied Soper's allegations and resisted testing. Well, shit, everywhere you go, your ass giving it to somebody. No matter how many Why outbreaks you changing your followed name? her career, Malin steadfastly refused to admit that she was the carrier of typhoid. Instead, she would quietly slip away after each outbreak, change her name slightly, and find a new job with a new family. Whether Mary actually understood she was a carrier of the disease and what is to be gleaned from her behavior is unclear. Her habit of changing her name could imply she was trying to deceive people into hiring her because she knew she was sick, or it could simply be a person's innocent attempt to avoid press attention. Typhoid at the or time both. was typically associated with poor hygiene and, by extension, poor people. As such, New York's health officials were surprised to encounter the illness in wealthy and upper middle class households. Servants were put under the microscope, so to speak, and eventually they got around to marry. Her poor hygiene did turn out to be an issue. When first questioned by health officials in 1907, Malin told them she didn't see any point in washing her hands before she handled food. This might Are sound reckless fucking to serious? Us today, but in 1907, the theory of germs hands was like relatively that? new, and Mary didn't seem to believe sickness could be transferred by physical contact. That being the case, she wouldn't see why hand washing was important. Scary stuff to think about. Meat clip. On one occasion in 1907, Dr. Soper came to Malin's workplace to take samples. Mary took this intrusion about as well as you'd expect, which is to say she completely refused to cooperate. In fact, one version of the story holds that Malin snatched up a meat cleaver and chased Dr. Soper out of the house. Other versions say it was a rolling pin or a meat fork, but no matter what With kitchen dog utensil dog? it was, the gist is always the same. It took several more tries before authorities were able to get the goods on Malin, and she never became more cooperative. Yeah, get your nasty Soper ass eventually hands out planned here. on having her forcibly restrained so samples could be taken. But before he was able to carry out his plan, the authorities intervened. Even then, Mary wouldn't give in, and their attempt to capture her culminated in a three-hour foot chase. <laughs> what the fuck? Mary was a three-hour foot chase. <laughs> what does that mean? Despite an all-out effort to avoid it, Malin was finally apprehended and taken into custody in 1907. Doctors took urine, stool, Ugh. and tissue samples, which eventually that confirmed that Malin was carrying the typhoid bacteria. This, despite the fact <laughs> really, that I'll she put Yoda. displayed no symptoms <laughs> herself. By all accounts, she seemed to be a picture of health. With no cure available, health officials had to find another course of action to protect the public. Keep her Malin ass was quarantined. Deemed a threat to society, and it was decided that she would be quarantined. Though she See? fought every step of the way, she was eventually confined to a single occupancy cottage at Riverside Hospital for Communicable Diseases, located on New York's North Brother Island. When confronted by reporters, Malin said she believed she was being treated unjustly, and she continued to insist that there was no way she could have typhoid. Nonetheless, Mary's case attracted so much attention, she was labeled Typhoid Mary in a 1908 issue of the Journal of the American Medical Association, and the name <laughs> stuck. That's fucked up. Mary Mallon wasn't America's first typhoid carrier, but she was the first asymptomatic carrier ever identified. This means that she was able to carry and spread the disease without ever showing any of its symptoms herself. Hmm, that sounds familiar. That is crazy. This was considered a hugely important scientific discovery. But that being the case, there was no existing protocol that addressed the situation. While the authorities did have the power to forcibly quarantine anyone who posed a threat to public health, and they knew Mary was somehow mixed up in all the typhoid outbreaks, they couldn't prove how or why she was involved. Mary didn't take kindly to the attention. She angrily claimed to be a victim of a government conspiracy, and at some points the public even seemed to agree with her. Regardless, authorities knew she had to be the carrier and were desperate to stop the trail of sickness and death she left in her wake. Scientists of Malin's time were never able to figure out how she could carry the bacteria that caused typhoid without showing symptoms. But in 2013, a group of researchers at Stanford solved the riddle. To put it as simply as possible, the salmonella bacteria behind the spread of typhoid has the ability to hide in immune cells known as macrophages and hijack their metabolism for their own purposes. 
If this hijacking is successful, the person in question can spread the bacteria while themselves appearing healthy. In 1910, Mary Mallon was released from her first quarantine under the condition that she would never again work as a cook. She took a job doing laundry, but it didn't last long. She left the position after a short time and returned to cooking for families. The authorities got back on Mary's trail, but she managed to avoid them by frequently changing jobs and names. Finally, Girl, in 1915, don't you, you Sloan Maternity Hospital in New York had an outbreak of 25 new typhoid cases. Mallon was discovered working there as a cook and was quickly arrested and returned to quarantine. By 1915, Mallon was infamously known to all as Typhoid Mary. She had been recaptured and placed back in quarantine at North Brother Island in New York. Her life there was not pleasant. Whether due to her intransigence with the doctors and staff or the facility's complete inexperience at handling cases like Mary's, it's known that she was treated inhumanely. The initial tests performed discovered that Mallon's gallbladder was riddled with salmonella bacteria. They wanted to remove the organ during her first quarantine, but she refused to allow it. They tried again during her second quarantine, and once again Mary managed to avoid the procedure. She wasn't able to avoid everything, though. Over her remaining years at the facility, doctors took over 160 biological samples from her body, all against her wishes. As if that wasn't indignity enough, Mallon was often shown off to journalists and interns as a specimen. When she wasn't being prodded or exploited, she was being neglected. As her interactions were severely limited by the doctors, she was only allowed to wash bottles in a laboratory. A life sentence. Dubbed the most dangerous woman in America, Mary Mallon had finally worn out whatever goodwill she had left with the authorities. Deciding that she simply could not be trusted to give up cooking or follow any sort of prevention guidelines, New York State public health officials decided she had to be quarantined for the remainder of her life. That's right, for life. Damn! She spent her remaining years in virtual isolation at the quarantine cottage on North Brother Island. Mary died in 1938, and though reports on the matter conflict, it is believed she likely passed away from pneumonia. It's not known how many cases of typhoid she spread in her lifetime, but estimates suggest she caused no less than 51 cases, resulting in three fatalities. Damn, While the discovery 400? of an asymptomatic typhoid carrier was big news in 1906, by the time Mary died in 1938, it was old hat. By that point, over 400 other healthy carriers had been identified. Yet, according to the surviving records, not a single one of these others received the same forced confinement that Mary Mallon did. The jarring discrepancy raised important philosophical questions about epidemic and public health protocols. Some began to wonder whether forcibly confining someone for the greater good of society at large was justifiable. Others pointed out that it was Mary's lack of honesty and refusal to cooperate that merited such severe treatment. These issues are still relevant in modern epidemiology. So what do you think? Do you feel any sympathy for typhoid Mary? Well, this was very informative, but it do sound like it was a tough time back in that time. Y'all, so the question that needs to be answered, do I feel sorry for this woman? Uh, somewhat because of, you know, her being said, it's being said that she was treated inhumanely. I mean, just because you being quarantined, don't I mean they gotta treat you like a damn lab rat or something. But I mean, what you expect with shit like that. But um, the fact that she kept on changing her name so, like, people wouldn't know who she is, but it's like, at the end of the day, if they seen your face, they know what the hell you look like. <laughs> and it's been reported that this woman, Mary Mallon, is out here passing around typhoid. You know, it's only a matter of time before the law catch up to you, catch up to you again. Or, it's like a regular person. I mean, you washing people's clothes, you putting your... Did y'all see them roughy, dufty, crusty, musty-ass hands? I don't know if they was her hands, but, I mean, they could have been. I mean, they look like... It was hella infected. Like, just imagine somebody with hands like that cooking your food. You know, putting a bun on a patty. You know, putting the sauce on the spaghetti noodles. You know what I'm saying? Uh, putting the fries in a McDonald cart. You know, like, ugh. Like, that just, like, just the, the, the thought of that picture of them hands, it just made me think of, like, some, like, bubbling acid sounds. Like, it's, because it's nasty. It's nasty as fuck. Okay? It's nasty as fuck. And... I could kind of like be, symp be sympathetic for her because of how she was possibly treated 
during quarantine and the fact that she just had to be, she was given a life sentence to be quarantined for the rest of her life. Like, I'm pretty sure that was not fun, but at the same time, you kept on changing your name. You kept on, you kept going back to job, to job, switching jobs and shit, wash people clothes, cook people food, knowing damn well you was a carrier, asymptomatic one at that, carrying this damn disease. And then other people was carrying it. Now, and then you got kids and stuff in the house. Like, come on. I would be pissed the hell off. My kids get sick or I get sick. Come on. And it's all thanks to who? You. Anyway, it just makes me think if people were more sanitary and, you know, thought more about being sanitary, I wonder where the world, what, what outcome would the world have had by now? You know, just like, you know, despite what's going on right now with the... You know, I don't think you can really talk about that. You know, you saw the damn picture on, you know, the last couple of minutes of the video. Um, you know, not just that, but like things such as climate change, right? If some of us humans wouldn't be littering in the grasses, in the dirts, in the roots, okay? And in the oceans, in the rivers, in the lakes, and everything else in the waterfalls that TLC sang about, I just wonder what outcome would the world have had, you know, and hopefully it would have been a better one. And I just hope that because, you know, it just makes me think like, man, we do need to do better with this planet. We do need to be more clean. We do need to be more thoughtful, you know, especially when it comes to places where the animals live. You know what I'm saying? And you know something? I don't know if y'all thought about this or maybe if I'm catching on a little too late. The movie Ice Age. Now, when I was a kid, I didn't think twice about the like messages that was in that movie right i had the game on the playstation i'm telling you i love the fuck out of that game i ain't lying i ain't lying anyway that ain't the point the point is what if that movie was sending us a message we didn't even know it because you know you got to pay attention to a lot of these movies you know you think you're just watching it for entertainment no bitch you gotta you gotta pay attention too don't just be looking at it for entertainment. Look, you got to pay attention and pay attention to the symbolism, the messages, all that. Like with the whole ice age, the meltdown, like the Arctic and all that shit, the ice and all the glaciers and all that shit melting down, all this water coming out of nowhere. I mean, think about where the polar bears lived at, you know what I'm saying? They're becoming extinct and very, very thin. Like them pictures really disturbed me because it's like, damn. They need places to live too, but you see some of y'all humans out there that want to build and build and build and build is the reason why climate change is going on right now. All I'm saying is I better not go outside one day all of a sudden I see a big ass wave just whoosh and wipe us the fuck up out of here. I hope the hell not. Listen, I want to live, bitch. I want to live. I want to earn. I want to own my first dog. Okay. I want to have me a familia of my own. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of stuff I want to do. A lot of stuff. So, Lord, don't be through with us yet. But anyway, this was very informative. It wasn't boring at all. Like, because when we was in school, we was learning about stuff like this. Now, I never learned, heard about this whole typhoid thing till now. Um, she was boring as hell. But this, this was very informative. This was not boring at all. I'm talking about in school. But yeah, you get what I'm saying. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video and you made it to the end, please hit the like button, okay? Comment below what you guys think about this whole typhoid Mary story. Do you, do you feel sorry for her? Do you feel sorry for I said a tiny bit because of how she was treated. I mean, nobody deserves to be treated like a damn lab rat. But you know what I'm saying? You wanted to change your name because you know damn well they was going to be on your ass. And you still kept on getting jobs, handling people food and they clothes. And then they wonder why they getting all these symptoms. The red spots, the uh, the uh, um, abdomen shit, the intestine shit, all that shit. The throwing up, the nausea, the blood, the in internal bleeding. I mean, all of that. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to feel sorry for somebody who kept passing that shit on and didn't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, y'all let me know. Do you feel sorry for or hell no? Uh, as well as anything else I can react to for you guys, hit that subscribe button. Follow me on my Instagram. Hit that New Instagram alert for my YouTube channel. Said. Follow that bitch. We going through a bit of a rut right now. But I have hope and I have faith. And we're going to get over it. We're, we're not get over it. Get through it. You know what I'm saying? And just be a little bit more cautious and be a little bit more thoughtful and be more smart when you out here in these streets. You know, people got kids, people got dogs, people got mamas and daddies and grandmas and granddaddies and stuff. Familias. We all have them. Shit. Think about it. Shit. Um, but yeah, with that being said, just wash your hands. Stay clean. 
clean your house when you need to, you know what I'm saying? Don't, if you wipe your nose, don't leave it on the damn counter. Somebody might put their hand right there without them realizing you had a damn tissue rag full of boogers and snot and mucus and spit and maybe even a little blood and a nose hair. Don't nobody want to touch that. Put the shit in the garbage. If you out at the beach whenever we can go back to the beach, you know what I'm saying, for all you beachers out there, don't put your garbage in the goddamn water, please. Stop doing that shit. It's dolphins in there. It's sharks and whales and fishes and octopuses in there. They don't. They shouldn't have to smother that shit down their throat because your lazy fat ass don't want to go to the garbage can and put that shit in the garbage can. Or bitch, recycle. Earth Day, hello. Go green, bitch. What's up? And uh, yeah, stay home. Stay home. Unless you gotta go get you some food or something. And uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Stay safe. Stay warm if you're um, um, cold. Stay cool if you're hot. Like I said, keep your, keep yourself clean. Tell your people that. And I'll uh, see y'all later on. It's Taylor Rain. I'm out. Well, how rude of some people.